So welcome back guys to another video and today I want to talk about games I've been playing. This is episode 13. I really enjoy doing this segment on the channel because it gives me a chance to talk about a wide prefla of various titles I've been playing for the last couple of months, kind of chronicalize my backlog and most importantly, you know, maybe if there's a game that you're on the fence about, I, I might mention it in this video. I mean, chances are if you're watching this, we had the same taste in games and Maybe it's something you want to check out, and that's one of my biggest goals is whenever someone watches the video, they have a new game to play. So the first game I want to talk about is a game that honestly was a big surprise. Honestly, I feel like this could be game of the year contender right here, and that is Trials of Mana. The Trials of Mana remake I got on the Nintendo Switch. It's also on the PS4 and Steam, and you know, I was on the fence about it. And the reason why is because the Secret of Mana remake that came out a couple of years ago was okay. It was kind of subpar. It wasn't the most amazing remake ever. And this one, just like Secret of Mana remake, is definitely a lower budget remake title. But they get something so right with this. This captures everything I love about old school JRPGs. And this is definitely a game tailored to my taste. And I really did enjoy it. Uh, I have the mana collection on the switch as well and i remember i was going to play trials of mana on the collection instead of the remake because i had never experienced trials of mana beforehand and i'm glad i played the remake it's it's really good the soundtrack's really good uh of course the voice acting is a it's a little bit subjective i think it's cheesy but i enjoy it as well but you know the story is very very stereotypical of old school jrpgs you know there's an oh, awoken evil brewing through the world, and there's a kingdom, uh, two kingdoms battling, and it's up to you know six folks to awaken the Sword of Mana and bring balance back to the world. And you know that's something I really like about Trials of Mana is it has so much replay value because you can only pick like three folks in your party. And with that being said, you want to go back and see what a, all you know backstory goes with other characters. I really do enjoy that and. You know, I will say, if I had to compare the original uh, Trials of Mana that you get on the collection and the remake, I would, I would almost say get this if you're new to JRPGs or if you don't want to go through the mundane uh, task of old school JRPGs because there's a lot of quality of life they added to this, uh, including a map. I know that sounds so weird, but the fact that you have a map and you know exactly where to go and you know you can go through different marks and stuff like that it makes dungeons a lot easier. It's not as cryptic. So I would definitely recommend this and you know, like I said, this is definitely a game of the year contender. And the next game I want to talk about is a game that I got during the buy two get one. Uh, and it was a game that's been on my radar for quite some time. It was a game that people talked about was remarkable. Some folks have even said it's one of the best Nintendo Switch games out there. And that is Astral Chain. Now Astral Chain is a very interesting game. I'm a big Platinum fan. I love, you know, um, Bayonetta and Nier Automata. I love those games so much. and. I, I really do admire Platinum, and I would say with Astral Chain, it's a very ambitious title. Uh, I feel like it's a title not for everybody. Uh, it, despite all the reviews and everyone that really gushes about the game, it definitely has you know, its merits for that. Um, the controls are kind of wonky. The controls and the pacing to this game is kind of wonky because, I don't know, Maybe when I went into Astral Chain, I was expecting, you know, over-the-top action like Bayonetta, where there's a lot more story to Astral Chain than Bayonetta. I mean, there's a lot more to it. I mean, it's in this futuristic, it made me think of like Blade Runner or Snatcher. It really has some like old-school Sega feels, in my opinion. But, you know, you're playing as 
this new recruit for this you know, special task force, this police force, and you guys are after these creatures that can't be seen by normal eyes, and you know, you capture these creatures, and you put them in these like cyborg exoskeletons, and they become legion, and the legion's a part of you, like the astral chain, and you know, you're essentially controlling two characters at once, and that's very ambitious, and it's very interesting, and leads to some really great action, really great combos, but it's confusing as well. It's one of those games that I feel like that if I was to put it down, I would have to relearn the controls all over again. Because some of it's kind of confusing. Uh, but for the most part, I think it's a really good game. I mean, if I was to give it a score, I would definitely give it a 7 out of 10. I think it's above average, but in my opinion, it's not like the best game of all time. But it's definitely something worth checking out, especially if you want to check out something unique that Platinum has done. Redshift. No time to lose. We've got to do something about this now. Now, a gaming announcement that I was really excited about was the remake of Alex Kidd in Miracle World. I cannot believe that Alex Kidd is back. I mean, if you guys remember, Alex Kidd was the, you know, quote unquote mascot of Sega before we had Sonic the Hedgehog. And, you know, Alex Kidd was really, you know, pushed back to the wayside as time went on. And to see a remake, I was really excited. It looks really good. And I went back on the eShop and I was just browsing through some of the deals and I noticed that Alex Kid in Miracle World was on sale on the eShop for $3.99. It was part of the Sega Ages collection. And I checked it out and I forgot how difficult Alex Kid in Miracle World is. It's a very difficult game. I mean, I like the fact with the Sega Ages collection, I can go and rewind and, and go back because Alex Kid is very stiff. It's weird, he's, he moves very stiff, and, but he's very slippery as well. It's not uh, a platformer, in my opinion, that's aged well over time. And, you know, I'm hoping they fix some of that with the remake. I hope it's just not, you know, a, um, you know, a sprite redone, a new coat of paint. I hope that it does fix some of the mechanics. And I would love to see more Alex Kidd in the future. And it was very nostalgic. And, man, that, that was a really good game. I would say, if you have not played... Alex Kidd in Miracle World, definitely check it out. It's super cheap on the Nintendo eShop. Now, I love fighting games. I absolutely love the genre. It's one of my favorite genres of all time, but I do have to admit I don't buy fighting games as much as I used to. And I think I think the reason is quite known. I mean, the fact that a lot of these games have DLC, I feel like, you know, once I spend that $60, I, I'm getting the vanilla version. There's gonna be a, a better version coming out. There's gonna be more fighters to, to purchase and play. But I'm glad I finally got to check this game out. And that is Dragon Ball Fighter Z on the Nintendo Switch. Now, I'm a huge Dragon Ball fan. And it's hard to believe that Dragon Ball Super now officially is five years old. I cannot believe it's a five-year-old series. And that's something I really like about this game is that it has a lot of characters from Dragon Ball Super, you know, including like Hit, and uh, there's a couple of DLC characters you can get as well. Some of the, like Cully and all of them, and Kale, uh, they're on it. And it's, it's really, really cool. It's a really, really fun game. And, you know, a lot of Dragon Ball Z games over the past I was getting kind of turned off of because it was like more of the same. And I have to admit, even with this game, I haven't really played through the story because there's only but so much you can do. There's only so many times you can retell the Dragon Ball Z story. So uh, shame on me for not playing the story yet. I've been playing mostly online, getting the snot kicked out of me. But when I win a match, it really feels rewarding. And then a lot of that's because I... I haven't played the game as long as uh, some folks, but the combat is amazing. It looks like you're watching Dragon Ball. 
It is so good. I absolutely love it. And I like the fact that it's a 2D fighter. And, you know, a lot of Dragon Ball games are kind of like 3D fighting or even like, you know, behind, like we saw with the uh, Budokai uh, Tenkaichi games. I didn't really care for those too well. But this one right here, I feel like is the epitome of a Dragon Ball fighting game. Eventually, I'll check out Dragon Ball Kakarot, but for now, this is a great, great Dragon Ball game. And the next game I want to talk about is a game that's been on my radar for years and a lot of reasons why I haven't played it until now is because I've never owned a Sony Vita. Now I'm talking about Persona 4 Golden. Now you can buy it on Steam and I'm absolutely thrilled that more folks can experience this really interesting JRPG. Now I will say one of the things that really intrigued me about Persona 4 is the concept. It's very like 80s movie kind of Goonies, Stranger Things inspired in, in many ways in my opinion because you know you're this new kid, you're moving to a new town, you're, you're in high school trying to meet new friends and all of a sudden you're involved in a supernatural murder mystery. You know this secret world that you go inside te the television and you're trying to save people and then you conjure up your personas and these it's like these tarot cards that you know awaken these monsters that assist you during the battle and it becomes almost like a a pokemon kind of aspect because you want to get more personas you want to fuse more personas the only way to get other personas is to you know um strengthen your relationships with different people in the game there's a lot to take into this game and the fact that it's all on a time limit. It goes on its own time clock and um, weather. You have to pay attention to the weather. You have to work jobs. I mean, there's so much to this game, but I'm absolutely loving it. I will say the only caveat to Persona 4 Golden is it's a slow cooker. It takes a while before things really start to get fun. I, I have to admit, I didn't even go through my first dungeon until I was like six hours into the game, which is crazy. Crazy enough for a JRPG, but very crazy for this, but it is well worth it. I mean, the music is awesome. It looks amazing on Steam. I, I'm really glad I finally got to play this game and that many other folks finally get to check out this really amazing JRPG. So the last game I want to talk about is kind of funny because I've talked about this game numerous times and that is uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons and one of the reasons why I'm mentioning this game, well numerous reasons, uh, most importantly is my girlfriend just recently got a Nintendo Switch Lite and I was going to show it to you guys and talk about the Lite but she's actually in the other room playing Animal Crossing right now. And she's already played the game a lot more than I have. She's kind of awakened my uh, enthusiasm for the game. Because I have to admit, I put it down for a while. And I was like, you know, picking it up every once in a while. But wasn't playing it a whole lot. But the fact that we can play together has made me want to play the game more. And it made me realize how great Animal Crossing New Horizons is. And, you know, they also release a new patch. You know where you can actually you know snorkel and you put on a wetsuit and go out to the ocean and swim and get you know various um, you know sea creatures and seashells and scallops that you trade to this otter to make you know various different furniture and stuff like that um, the the patch is okay the updates it's all right but i've had more fun playing it with my girlfriend i mean there was a time that we were actually playing hide and go seek Hide and go seek in Animal Crossing. We were like hiding from each other and trying to find each other within each other's towns. And 
I, I really feel like this is a very special Nintendo game. And I, I haven't put as many hours as many other folks, but I will say that this is definitely another Game of the Year contender. I've been really enjoying it. And I will say, if you're on the fence about Animal Crossing New Horizons, check it out. It's freaking awesome. And it's a great time waster, but also a great game to play with your significant other or family or friends. And you can even go on the internet if you don't have friends locally that you can play. I mean, they, these are really crazy times that, you know, social interaction is kind of scarce. And I feel like this game really fills in that gap. But anyway, guys, those are some games I've been playing recently. I've been really just having a lot of fun playing so many different titles. But what have you been playing? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear some of your titles and we can talk amongst the community. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, but also hit the bell so you're notified on all future videos coming out on this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And as always, happy gaming.